Making beer at home in your own kitchen is not as hard as you think. I can show you how I do that, and I don't spend a lot of money on it either. Welcome to Cheapskate Brewing. Well, welcome to a brew day, and now I'm going to make a brew, and I'm going to use all of the ingredients that are in the recipe shown below, but at the same time, I'm going to be using only the equipment that was also shown on my last basic equipment needed for a brew to be made at home in your own kitchen. And as you can see, I've already got my strike water heated up and I'm going to put the bag, which is all laid out here. I've got the, the, all the ingredients all pre-weighed. and I've got my thermometer and I've also got a measuring stick, which is homemade so that of course saves you the trouble of buying something to measure your water so that I can see just how much water is in my brew pot at any given time. At the same time I also have my net bag ready to go in so we'll get a start on that now. Okay the mash is now happily stirred into the pot. I've checked the temperature I started off at 71 degrees, which will drop nicely while we wait for the rest of the mash to drop its own temperature within the strike water so that we're running at around about 67 degrees. And I can check that just to make sure. We'll see what sort of temperature we're getting. Yes, 67 degrees, which is a good place to start. And it can happily sit there now I'll put the lid on and I should put a towel over it so it keeps the temperature in and leave it to sit there for about an hour. Giving the mash a stir now just to make sure I've got no dough balls and everything's doing exactly what it should be doing. I've checked the temperature again and we're still sitting happily at 65 degrees and that's perfectly okay. Okay, mash time is over. 60 minutes are up and it's time to take the grain bag out of the pot. I'm going to lift it out gently and put a sieve underneath it so that it can drain. Some people say it's okay to give the bag a squeeze and some people say you shouldn't give the bag a squeeze. I've never found squeezing the bag a little does any harm so that's what I generally do just to make sure I get the best of the goodness and the liquid out of the grain. You always lose some, but that's okay. We can make that up later. I've checked the specific gravity and we are bang on the numbers at the moment. I was expecting 1057 and that's exactly what I'm getting. Okay, I've made the pot up to six liters now. I'm aiming for a 5 litre batch and the reason why I've made it 6 litres is because we expect to lose about a litre during the boil process. I've already put my East Kent Golding hops in a bag so they can go in as soon as I start to get a rolling boil and I have ready the Pearl and East Kent Golding hop mix which is for the aroma afterwards and they will go in at the end of the mash. Okay, it's just coming to a boil now, and now it's time to put the first hops in, which are the East Kent Goldings, and that will give us the bitterness, and they will sit in the boil for the full length of the boil process, which is about one hour. As you can see, I've put a peg on the side of the pot, because we don't want this boiling over. We just want it sitting at a nice rolling boil. So it's always a good idea to keep an eye on this. I don't suggest you walk away and find something else to do for an hour. Just a little check in, just to make sure that the rolling boil is doing what it says and it's rolling and boiling, but not boiling all over the cooker top. We really don't want that. Everything's still looking good. 
I've got about 20 minutes to go, so I'll pop back and check on it in 20 minutes. And when it's time to put the second hops in that flame out, we'll do that. Okay, we've now come to the 60 minute part of the boil. Now we can knock the heat off and that's the flame out condition. And now we can drop the other hops, the non-bittering hops into the brew and let it, let it steep. I usually allow about 20 minutes and then we can consider the next move. Now that the boil is over and I've taken out the hot bags, I'm putting the pot in a sink with cold water to cool it down as quickly as possible. This helps to get the particles that are left in the wort to settle and to give us a slightly clearer beer is what we hope for. Now that the wort is down to pitching temperature, I can siphon it into my demijohn as I'm only making five litres so this will be just perfect for that. And as always, everything I'm using, demijohn, funnel, and the tubing, are all sanitized, ready, so that I can get everything done perfectly. It's the only way to go. So I'll put the demijohn lower than the wart, and I can just go ahead and siphon it. Now the wort is happily siphoned into the demijohn. And as they say in the chemical for the sanitisation, don't fear the foam. The foam is perfectly harmless. So now I've already sanitised the airlock. I can give it another quick dip just to make sure that everything is perfectly okay and that can sit happily on top there while I do a quick clear up and then I can pitch the yeast. Okay now we have everything at the right temperature and it's time to pitch the yeast. It's quite simple. Just a case of, I'll put about a third of a sachet in here because this is designed for five gallons. We're only making one, so and I've already used it for one, so I know that I've got about half of what I've got in here left. So I shall just sprinkle that in. It's dry yeast. That's probably enough. Pop that back on. And just to be on the safe side, I shall keep it in the kitchen overnight because that's when most of the excitement starts. And then from then onwards, it will go in a nice dark place, but indoors because I want to keep the temperature around about the 20 to 22 degree mark. That's when this yeast is particularly happy. I am using Safal SO4, which is a, a fairly common dry Aeon yeast. So I'll put all the details in the bottom and if you'd like to try it yourself, I hope you have some happy brewing. Thanks for watching.